the, uh, the first thing, maybe let's start off with some an easy one. Um, your name, pronouns, in Indigenous Nation. My name, Cougar Crayon Goodbear. Uh, in Lipan, you'd say, uh, like, and that's uh, and is 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 a uh, cougar or a wildcat. The prison that's just the French. <laughs> uh, good bear shastone tene is like Mister Mister Good Mister Bear Good, little. Uh, and it's saying mister because uh the bear is respected in our culture and so when you address bear or shush uh you 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 put that tana in front or you know to, to give the respect mr chief cougar mr good bear <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could you uh, could you tell us where you're from and where you reside now? Okay. Uh, where I'm from, I'm from La Lafayette. Yeah. Um, I was born here, but moved away twenty something years. <laughs> uh, moved back. Uh, now I live in Karen Crow, Louisiana. I've been in Karen Crow for like six years going on seven if i'm not mistaken um moved away uh came back here because of uh family medical issues uh with uh my parents and i was called by my pop my father my pappy i say pappy and mappy and all that stuff but anyway uh i was called by my father and you know to tell me uh the situation that was going on with my mom and so and i was living in nevada then but i've lived in several other places uh with other indigenous people and so i moved back here to help out with my mother gotcha. yeah. that kind of like ties into the next question of like uh just trying to give like a good overview of of your life from like just the big arch we'll definitely get back to some of the stuff you talk about but could you quickly like kind of just give an overarching life story and in three minutes i'm gonna go grab my notebook so i can take notes one second okay <laughs> all right okay like, well like to to go back to the first question, the the what the pronoun and what? Yeah. Um, oh yeah, your pronouns, your indigenous nation, and your name. Okay. Well, okay. I, I gave my name. Uh, pronoun. Uh, he him. Uh, and indigenous nation, Lipan Apache, um, specifically Kansi, uh, Kansi Inde, and Kansi is uh, significant to like the people. Poles in a row standing or in another dialect, it can also mean um, like red, red mud people. But for the for the French, they they say can't say Shanetche was like Kanai, like the mischievous ones. <laughs> Okay. And what was your next one? Oh, I was uh, just like kind of like the overarching, okay. uh, overarching. life story. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I grew up with like my mom, my dad. Um, Many siblings. We are fifteen kids. <laughs> uh, or uh, five girls and uh, ten ten boys. Everyone's still living. Um, and I grew up 
a lot like with my grandparents. Um, so I, so that that way I know a lot of like the old, the old ways, uh, like with the medicine and stuff like that. Uh, also, I mean, my dad knows a lot as well. Um, my dad is Creole. I mean, not Creole. I'm talking about think about my mom. My dad is Lipan Apache. My mom is Creole from Louisiana. So that's that's my genetic makeup, you could say. So they say Creoles are a mixture of of African and French and some native, um, which my mom, but my grandparents, they they did speak Creole. They did speak French. Um, my dad, he learned the the Creole French, and he told me that his parents didn't want him to learn French. They say that's not your language. Don't be, <laughs> don't learn that language. And but he, well, he was fascinated with it, you know, and hearing people talk, and he he learned it. I mean, he he learned it, and. He can and he communicated with my grandmother a lot. My grandmother and my grandfather in uh, they say French, but it's Creole, it's, uh, in Creole French. And um, but his brother, his brother and his sister, they didn't, they don't know anything about, they don't know how to speak Creole or nothing like that. He's the only one. Um, and he said. Uh, so growing up, I'm like the lettuce because people ask me, well, you know, like, are you the oldest or the youngest or something like that? But um, I just say the lettuce because I'm in the middle of, <laughs> I'm in the middle of many. <laughs> so I have older and I have older siblings and I have younger siblings and even the older ones, they don't look their age. And, <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's very interesting. and. Um, I'm also, I think I'm quieter than everyone else, I think, because, um, I didn't like go out and like make a lot of friends, like a lot of my siblings and do all that clubbing and all that stuff. But I don't know, I guess I stayed more with my grandparents and learned a lot of stuff which as i look at it now it they you know like a lot of them ask me for uh like medicinal stuff like or the the tea like the monglier that uh that we're still using even for coronavirus <laughs> um and the tecabre and all that stuff and it's it's a lot it's a uh, golden tea as well de laurier uh but i don't know i mean I, I, then like going to school uh i was put out of class and I think middle school. Yeah, I, I was put out of class in middle school because <clears throat> with the social studies teacher, uh, they were talking about how the European came to the Americas and the natives attacked them and they had to defend themselves. So they had, so the natives were, were fought back, were pushed back, and then put on reservations and it was like about two, three pages. <laughs> and and I was mad. I mean, I'm, I'm like, that's not what happened, you know? And and I still remember the guy's name. And um and he was like, well this is this is the curriculum and you're gonna follow it and you know and you, you know and I'm like, no, I don't agree to that. And he's like, well you can just leave the class. So I left the class. I mean, <laughs> so I I had to stand out in the hallway, and surprisingly, um, 
and my fellow students, they they were like supporting me. I was, I was like surprised about that. I'm like, wow. <laughs> They're like, well, why are you putting him out? He knows what he's talking about, you know. <laughs> so, you know, and I'm like, wow, they supported me. I was surprised, but yeah. Um. Also, I've encountered some other stuff. Like, I've been to, to uh, the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale. I attended that uh, in uh, higher education, uh, and there was also, you know, like the 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 native thing about the the teacher said that um, that natives didn't really exist anymore, and it, it was me and another guy who, who who was in the class who was in this teacher's class, <laughs> and and we and we were like, wait a. <laughs> I'm native, and then he said, "I'm native too." <laughs> it was like we do exist, and the teacher was like dumbfounded, like, <laughs> uh, and I was like, you know, and we, you know, and we we spoke about. It. I'm like this person thinking I'm African American, and he, the other thinking that the other guy was Latino, maybe, and it was like, you know, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm Apache, and I think the other guy was a uh, Choctaw, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, Florida. So, you know, I've encountered some stuff uh, in my lifetime in dealing with, like, the general public. Um, also, situation where me and me and a Navajo. Uh, friend we were driving and this is in Oklahoma and um we stopped at a store and you know and the guy the guy was like hey y'all some Indians huh or something and, and we're like yeah and they're like huh okay so y'all still live in teepees and all this stuff and I'm like dude no <laughs> <laughs> they're like I mean yeah, we can set up a TV, <laughs> but like, still living in TP, I wouldn't mind, really. I mean, if we could get some good um, insulation in there and stuff like that and all that. And, I mean, you know. Honestly, you know. for the for the square feet, I mean, it would be a killer yeah. these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's and and that same friend um, that there's an Asian guy at school, I think he's Chinese, and he thought that my Navajo friend was Chinese. <laughs> he's like, "Hey, where's that, where's that Chinese that you hang out with?" I'm like, "What Chinese guy I hang out with?" <laughs> and, and he, he said, "He said, well, that guy you always hang out with." I'm like, "I don't hang out with Chinese guy. It's Navajo." He's like, oh, what? <laughs> Because he has, he haven't. I mean, he's you know he hasn't heard of Navajo Apache and 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 I'm like, yeah, he's Navajo. He's Native American. Oh, Native American? He's like, oh, <laughs> I thought this guy was Chinese. <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you know, we're just. I'm like, okay, so. Sometimes I, I used to think, I'm like, okay, so are we the basis of everyone or something like that? Because, I mean, natives are being mistaken for everything in the book but native. <laughs> it's just, it's crazy. Um, so I've, I've done, I've done elementary, I've done high, middle school, high school, uh art institute uh i've been to many schools uh art institute also i've done um foreign exchange i've lived in mexico uh foreign exchange to mexico i've uh i've been to school in norman oklahoma um at ou I was a Sooner. Mm -mm. 
I don't like that name either <laughs> sooner, <laughs> but um, I went to school in Guadalajara, La Autonoma de Guadalajara, uh, Udeje, uh, and that was where I learned Spanish even, I, I've learned Spanish more there as well, because I had a uh, language immersion. So I've lived in Mexico for like four years, estimated more or less, probably more. <laughs> and I was working there and the school that I was working at, it was to um, teach English as a second language to business people as well as like uh, college students. And there were also like middle school kids there as well learning and so the company that I was working for got bought out by another company and uh, they wanted to keep me there because a lot of the students uh, they you know they 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 really enjoyed my classes and they, they liked me and just like well we want to keep you but the only thing that was the hindrance was that um, once that company was bought out, it was like I, I, I had to start over again. So like there, you, you have like a severance pay. Um, so I would have lo lost my severance. So like my seniority and all that stuff. And I was like, mm, no, I'll just cash out. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going through all that again. <laughs> yeah. So I cashed out and I moved back here to the United States. Uh, but while I was in Mexico, I also, I hung out. That's all I was hanging out with were indigenous people there. I hung out with the Curepacha, the Huichols, the Ch uh, Chichimecas. Uh, and I went to ceremonies with them as well uh, in the mountains. Um, I'm... Religiously, I am a peyotero. Um, here in Louisiana, there's no uh, medicine here in, in, in that aspect. Um, and no uh, church, uh, which is NAC, Native American Church. And that's, that's dealing with... Uh, well, I'd rather say it in language uh, that, that's dealing with Hosh. So Hosh is, is, is the medicine. So, and it's, and it's like the sacrament of, in, in church, just to give you like a, <laughs> yeah, like a parallel. Um, and I have my, okay, since I'm going to be on YouTube, <laughs> I have my, uh, my ID documentation because as native people, we still need documentation even for religion. So <laughs> I have my, my ID saying that uh, I am a, a member of NEC, the American church. Um, and yeah, I, I, I mean, even though I'm not practicing it here, I would love to, and it's, Texas is the closest one, the closest church is in Texas, and it's with the Come Crudo people, and because I've contacted them and spoken to them about that, and they're, they're interested in me going, but it's far, it's, it's, it's far to go there every weekend, and, you know, to practice your religion, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, so what I do, I, I just, you know, I, I, I do my own thing. I, I pray here, uh, in NAC, we use the, the water drum and the rattle. Um, so yeah, I have my little, and I also want to do like a little thing because I own my own property now. So I want to do my own little 
um, ceremony shit out there. Uh, so I can, e even if it's just me, so I can practice my own religion. Um, and I've visited uh, a mosque. I've been to Catholic church. I've been to African-American church um, or an African church. I mean, it's, it's called Imani Temple. I've been there. Uh, someone I knew uh, invited me there and I, I went there. And all of it is, all of it is interesting. I respect all the religion and, you know, it's, it helps people. Um, let's see. So like moving back here was, was hard because like living here while growing up here, um, I moved away from here like after high school. <laughs> so I've only like went, I, I went to the community college for like probably two, two or four years, if I'm not mistaken. I think probably four years I went to community college and then I was done. I was like, okay, I got to get out of here. <laughs> so, um, my mom, she didn't want me to leave. My dad, he was like, you can go do what you got to do. Um, you know, if you feel that, you know, that you're stifled here, then, you know, do, do what you got to do. So I left. I, I, uh, and I, I went to Florida first. That was the first uh, location that was at the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale. And then on to Oklahoma and then on to Udeje in Mexico. Um, and, but I've lived in California, I've lived in Utah, I've lived in, I visited Colorado. Um, I've lived in Texas, uh, I lived in Old Mexico, I lived in Arizona, and Nuevo Mexico, that's New Mexico. Um, and it's very different from here. Louisiana has its own little charm, but a lot of those places are different. Uh, I've, and I've hung with native people <laughs> all the time. I tried to find um, the native centers that like in California, uh, oh, I've, in Nevada as well. Um, I've tried to find the, the native centers in each big city or uh, places like that um, to make me feel more at home, even though it's with different natives. I mean, we're all native. Um, and, you know, share experiences with each other. Um, and I made a lot of good friends. Uh, it's just sad that uh, because changing phones and stuff like that and you, you, you lose contact over the years. And like one friend, I've, I've actually got in contact with them again. And his mom, his, his, his mom was like so ecstatic. She was like, oh my God, I thought you fell off the face of the earth. <laughs> she was like, where were you? And, you know, because uh, I mean, we hung out together in, in school. So it was just like, I'm, like, I'm still here. I, we just, I think. Mean, my phone. I, I mean, I didn't remember you guys' phone number because and all this stuff and just lost contact. But I forgot. I I met someone and then I asked them about um, if they had any contact info for them, and they got in contact with somebody else, and it, and then it snowballed from there, and yeah. I got in contact with them again. So that was cool. But right now, I am 
not a, which is chief or chairman of the Kensi in there. Um, that was unexpected. I was not expecting that at mm -hmm. all because we had a we had a gathering and um, a lot of my relatives were there and uh, and they were deciding what to do and. <laughs> I said, well, we, we we need to, you know, elect somebody, uh, you know, somebody that can spearhead, you know, the resurgence of the of, of the Lipan here in Louisiana. <laughs> and <laughs> they they chose me, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and. You know, I, I thought my grand uncle, I was like, well, what about my grand uncle? What about my dad? I mean, they know more stuff than I do. Like, I mean, they had the experience back then of, you know, like living uh, on the land, uh, going out there and getting the medicine and all that stuff. <laughs> I mean, and, and, but, you know, now that I look at it, I understand why, in hindsight, why they chose me because my grand uncle, he's not with us anymore. My dad, he doesn't have the patience for any of this. <laughs> he, he, he's a Vietnam vet and yeah, he doesn't have the, the, the patience. He has the knowledge, he can tell you a lot of stuff, but um, he doesn't he doesn't have the patience for it. That's like sitting down and just talking like this. It's foreign to him. Um, you'd have to talk to him in person, and then also catch him on a day where he's not, you know, busy trying to do something else. So it's, yeah. I said okay. So I guess, but at first I was like very resistant. I was like, no, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> and um. But it, it grew on me. Um, I got a lot of guidance from uh, my elders, uh, my elders here, as well as in Texas. Um, uh, a specific elder, uh, Mary Lee Wynn. Um, also, uh, Domingo Carrillo. They're, they're both Lepons and one lives here and one lives in Texas. And they are tremendous help in guiding me and helping to know, you know, like make decisions on things and stuff like that. Anything more? Thank you. I took a lot of notes. I, I feel like there's a lot of things to like go back to. I I guess uh, I don't know what I don't know where, where I want to go with this yet. Um, I guess <laughs> one thing that one thing that I heard I guess is the first thing is that like did you um, growing up did you struggle with your indigenous identity? It, it sounds like you like mm -hmm. because of like oh, I'm thinking about the middle school incident. It seems like from mm -hmm. a very early age you were you were very very sure. Um, and very willing to stand up. Is that true, or could you tell me a little bit about that? Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. Since I was young, I I, I knew um, because they told me. You know, they like on my dad. Them they they didn't hide. They, they in a way they kept it low key, but they didn't hide like you know who they were, like. You know we're Apaches, and and I and like growing up, I'm like, well, okay. I was like, okay, the the and on TV, okay, growing up on TV, we watched the old spaghetti westerns, and I'm like, okay, the cowboys always killing natives, and even though they weren't native, they were white people, <laughs> dressed, dressed as natives. But back then you didn't, it didn't click. You know, you're, you're thinking like, okay, these are real natives and the cowboys are killing the natives. So natives must be bad and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and they watched the spaghetti westerns religiously, but they also said, "He said that's us. That's you know, he said we're Apaches." And, and he also, you know, they they'd make like jokes like, you know, yeah, and you know that one over there, that's a Comanche because of the way they act. Like maybe somebody that they had a little the way that person act sometimes and they were like oh he act like a comanche <laughs> you know or something like that i mean i grew up knowing um and i grew up knowing that you know mom them as well uh the creole um so you know growing up like that knowing and uh having and going to school and having teachers try to lump dump you into something else <laughs> i don't know that didn't fly with me even though I, I i said i was the quietest one out of the the siblings but i was strong i'm strong headed <laughs> as well and and i didn't let them you know I, I didn't, I couldn't, because it's like, okay, then that's erasing me. You know, it's like, no, that's not happening. Okay. And as I grew older, you know, I I became more um, knowledgeable and more confident, I guess. Um, <laughs> and knowing that, okay, what I was told about you know, like the medicines for this, the medicine for that. It's, you know, it's it's real, it's solid, you know, because I get other people from the tribe, you know, saying, yeah, we used to use that. We used to use this and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay. So my dad them told me that, you know, that, that they used to use <clears throat> a certain plant for, for like the winter time and stuff like that. Um, so it prompted me to also study it more as well. Um, and in studying like the, the medicinal plants, um, like Vermilionville, Vermilionville asked um, me and some of my family about, I think they also asked the attack of pause. But um, they they asked us about the medicinal plants if we knew any medicinal plants and stuff like that uh here in louisiana that we used and we we told them you know that and they got researchers to you know that you know that found the plants and stuff like that and it it, it was true the the medicinal garden in vermilionville you know was was uh helped by native people they planted that garden because we we told them you know uh the plants that they used back then and that are still here that a lot of people don't know and because i see them and i'm like people don't even know that that's a plant that you can use for this <laughs> it's just weird and, and it's it's like they just mow it down or it or it's there in a like a an overgrown field or alongside the road and stuff like that and people don't even realize it yeah it's just forgotten I'm always interested on like the, the the line between what people call a weed and what people call an herb and how they're the same but <laughs> it's just a different perspective right right yep one thing that i was i heard you talk about was you know this um, I want to know why you chose the Fort Lauderdale Art Institute. Um, do you do you practice art, or what was it that drove you to to pursue that as a career? Uh, okay, the Fort the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale. Okay, I went there because I used to draw. I I, I was an artist. Uh, I am an artist. Um, I haven't. My my skills have evolved and changed <laughs> over the years. Yeah. But uh, growing up, I used to make my own toys. Oh. Uh, any one of my relatives can attest to that. 
I did my own toys. Uh, I would watch He-Man and uh, Transformers and all that. And um, and I drew. I drew. I drew my own toys. I actually cut them out, and I used this from cereal boxes. Uh, and I can still construct them now. Uh, cereal box. I drew the figure. The arms were not connected. I drew the figure. I took the the bread ties that you you tie a bread with, and I punched a hole where the shoulders were and where the the thighs. Well, yeah, the uh, the hips. And I put that bread twisty or the tie, the bread tie through the body, and I connected the arms. So you had the 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 yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, I did that. I mean, I, I did that. I made my own transformers out of braid ties. Wow. Yeah, I wish my mom had to had taken pictures of that when I was when I was young. <laughs> um, and I did my own dinosaurs out of aluminum foil. Wow. I mean, I had a dresser, like a dresser drawer on top of the drawer, the dresser drawer. Full of it. Well, they, they weren't dinosaurs. They were like dragons to me. <laughs> so they were like, and the whole top of it was full of dinosaurs and and stuff like that. And I had my cardboard men in a box, and I had my transformers in another box. And my <laughs> some of my cousins they 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 would uh, visit us, and they said. Y'all not scared that those things will come alive at night? <laughs> they, 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 they would ask her that because I and, and I would hear you know them talking and like they're like you're not as afraid that those things are gonna come alive at night, y'all. You know, this <laughs> my mama said, yeah, I don't know where he gets that from, but <laughs> and so you know, like to her, they they probably look mean or evil or whatever. But, um, and I, I've done that for years because we couldn't afford transformers and all that stuff. Uh, I watched them and I created them my own way. Um, and then like when we moved, uh, what she did was she, she packed, we packed my stuff, but she didn't bring it. Right, yeah. Oh, <laughs> she didn't bring it. And when we when we when we arrived to the other house, we were unpacking all the stuff. And I was like, where's my box? <laughs> and my box was gone. <laughs> no. All, all the stuff I created was gone. Cause I, I, I began to as, as as I grew up, I began to uh dabble with clay. So I started to flesh out these well, dragon dinosaurs, whatever, and you know, try to make them look more realistic. <laughs> all that is gone. It's all gone. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so yeah, so I, you know, like thinking about it, I, I think she was scared that my my cousin scared her and stuff like that, and she's like, "No, nah, you're gonna make something that's gonna come alive on us." <laughs> Uh, and so, uh, in school, you know, I I heard about the going to an art school because I I took art class as well, and and that was my my interest, and so I decided to go to uh, the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale because it was away from here, <laughs> um, and I enjoyed it. I really did. Enjoy. It was it, it was me by myself. Um, I I hung out with Cubans and uh, actually Indians from India, <laughs> and it was pretty. It was it, it was awesome. Do you still have I'm, an art practice? <laughs> an art practice? Yeah. Um. Now, what I do is I. It's like I'm in between because I have a lot of things 
I've, I've created um, minis. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but minis are like the tabletop game pieces, figures. Okay, okay so I've created my own little minis uh, with this, uh, with Hero Forge. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a company that you create, you, you have the, the app where you can design your own character and they 3d print it out for you wow so i've done that recently i i have them over there <laughs> um and i want to get my own 3d printer though mm -hmm. so i can do my own thing i want to make some bigger rooms so that's where i'm at like my like i said like thinking about it when i was young from the cardboard uh, that I used to do to now, it's you know, it, it just evolved, and you know, in, in my perspective. Um, so I have those, and I'm gonna paint those. So I'm gonna be painting minis. Um, I also know how to do traditional drums um, and uh, drumsticks. We use water drums instead of uh, the flat drums. I'll explain the water drum later. I could have brought that. Ah. Um, also, um, I do the traditional necklace, uh, drop leaf necklaces. Uh, like for example, this this med this medicine bag was given to me by a medicine man in Texas. We just recently went to Texas. Um, for Texas tribal buffalo. The Lipons now have buffalo. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, so I went to the, the first, the ceremony for that. And a medicine man came up to me and he gave me, he gifted me the, his medicine bag. Beautiful. Um, there are things inside of it. Um, I'm not going to say what, but he gifted it to me and it was just a bag. It was just the the leather bag with the medicine inside and i created everything else wow it's beautiful <laughs> around, around it that's yeah yeah that's the apache drop leaf oh. necklace that's i still know how i know how to do this wow. the the beadwork mm -hmm. that um oh nice beautiful this is my blessed bag and it was just uh, the the chain was different. So the blessed bag, uh, when you have a, a naming ceremony, you're given a blessed bag. Uh, this is mine, and there's medicine in it as well. But for a blessed bag, it's sealed off. Um. So the thing I did with the with the chain, I added the uh, mescal beans on it there's also uh, the mescal beans or the mom laurel they're used uh, for ceremony as well for peyote it's a beautiful color yeah 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 they're, they're, they have uh, red ones wow. as well as well as yellow oh for example red one and that's the same bean yeah same bean wow. yeah cool. yeah it's a bean <laughs> <laughs> And that's the, seed, that's the seed of mezcal, is that correct? Yes. Uh, you can't, you can't eat it though. You can't, it's, <laughs> you'll, you'll hallucinate <laughs> and probably be poisoned, but um, yeah, you can't eat it. It looks, it looks, it looks like a red bean in a way. Yeah, it looks like candy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but. The bright color is not good. Not, not for in, not for uh, ingesting though. <laughs> and the earrings, did you make these also? Okay, the earrings. Uh, -uh I didn't make these. I made some other ones. I, I'm not wearing those. Uh, these were gifted to me by the elder's wife, uh, Donna Cario. Uh, these are peyote earrings, and it's in the peyote. Uh, shape and style uh it's green and yellow there's different colors 
like green and yellow, you can you can tell on the camera, but it's different colors. It's, it's the payo colors, but I mean, they use different colors for payo because uh, like for us, Lipans, we use green. Uh, green is one of our sacred colors. Um, and so we have white, black, green and yellow. Some Lipans also have white, black, blue, and yellow. And blue and green are is the same uh, word in Lipan is the same word. It's just the way you just the way you use it, you can tell if uh, you know you're talking about water or you're talking about grass, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I do that. I mean this cap is a beaded, <laughs> <laughs> but nice. I didn't, uh, I got this from Pow Wow, so oh. I didn't do this. Uh, a young lady did this for me when I was at the Pow Wow, and I wanted my cap beaded, and my name is on it. Oh, wow, on the cap. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. right here. You can't see it, but yeah. my name is on there, and it's in, it's in, it's in Apache. It's not in English. <laughs> nice. Um, so, I mean. Uh, there's a few things that you brought up that I wanted to see if you, you know, like I'm thinking about what it practices that you engage in regularly. And I heard a few things, you know, we talked a little bit about um, herbal medicine and the Mongole and the, the golden tea and how some of that is still being used currently mm -hmm. uh, for COVID. I also heard you talking a little bit about um, Native American church and like questions on why is there no Native American church here and, and your participation in that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, do, is there anything that, uh, and then like the, the idea of moving home and how, you know, the things that you possibly were able to do when you were away or, um, are different than the ways that are the things that you're able to do now. Um, and then I also heard about drumming and developing a water drum. Um, do you want to talk about any, any of that or pick something or? No. Uh, okay. Like. With the water drum, the, the water drum that Apaches use, um, it can also be used in, a, in a, it's being used now in peyote ceremony. Lipans uh, brought the peyote over from, from the uh, Northern Mexico area into the United States. Um, we, uh, we use the water drum, like just for everyday singing and dancing, but it was also used for ceremony. And so now, uh, like with the NAC, they use the water drum for the ceremony only and for, for, for payout songs and stuff like that. So that, that's what it's used for, for, for that. But in Apache culture, Apache life, generally the, the water drum is used for all the songs for social dancing and ceremony and ceremonial. That's 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 the drum, that's our drum that we use. Um, making the water drum, uh, we use um, cypress knees. Really? Huh. Yep. Cypress knees. There's there's actually one in uh, a museum in Natchitoches. I'm trying to figure out where that museum is. There's a museum in Natchitoches that has a, a water drum that was preserved, and that was the only one here in Louisiana still. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think someone, I, I think uh, someone from uh, our band, he might know, he might know where it is. I think knows. Um, and so yeah, we, we use Cypress knees. We we hollow it out, not all the way through. You could do it uh, a certain depth. It's up to that, up up to the individual. And you, because with Cypress knee, it doesn't rot from from the from the moisture from the from the uh, water. And you you pour the water in, and they also put. Uh, you can also put certain things into the into the drum. Um, uh, you can say medicine, you can put medicine in, 
in, into the water, into the drum. You cover it, you cover it uh, with buckskin or leather and you tie it, you tie it, you, you make it tight, the, um, the leather. Because what you want is that leather to be tight. If it's, if it's uh, soft or flabby, it, it'll give you like a bloop, 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 like a, <laughs> like a soggy sound. Yeah, like <laughs> so, a bad watermelon almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you want, so you want it tight. Um, but you, you want it wet as well. So when you hit it, 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 it vibrates. It gives you that sound. And you can tell the difference when it's, uh, when it's dry and when it's wet. When it's dry, you don't get that, that sound. You don't get that good sound, that vibration. When it's wet, the vibration uh, resonates in, inside the hollow area with the water. And it's all, it's all connected, earth, water, the, the, the bones of the body, the body, it's all, all related. The heartbeat uh, with the sound. It's, <laughs> it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what other, um, what other cultural practices you participate in or cultural practices you wish you participated in? Um, uh, I participate in powwows, um, powwows, uh, pan-Indian, uh, but I also participate in Apache culture, um, Okay, with the powwows, I I dance, I do uh, gourd dancing. And so with every powwow that I that I go to, I try to participate in the gourd dancing. I have uh, my gourd dancing regalia. Um, I love gourd dancing. <laughs> um, I wanted to branch out into doing grass dancing. I had someone making me a grass grass dance regalia and COVID hit and so now I'm trying to figure out like where that person is with the progress of the outfit. Um, also, um, okay, with Apache culture, I, uh, everything that's, that's, that's going on, um, like anything that's going on in, our culture, I try to go to as much as possible if I have money to go or the time uh, due to working now. Um, but yeah, like when, like I mentioned earlier, the tribal buffalo ceremony that we just had recently uh, uh, last month. Um, I went there, participated uh actually drum some songs there um to uh to help bless the the the, the uh, buffalo and the uh and and the people there um i help uh smudge and uh cleanse the circle of participants um we do uh, annually, well, before COVID, we did annually uh, a memorial walk in Corpus Christi, Texas. Um, that's for remains of, uh, the, there was tribal remains that were dug up in, that, in, uh, in an area in Corpus Christi. Um, and so we go there to, they, they did uh, let, the, the, the tribes know that they dug up Native American remains. Um, the remains were uh, given a ceremonial re-entering into the, into the earth. Uh, and from there, we, we started the, the memorial walk to let people know that we are still here 
and that um, they're they're doing a, a a statue in that area to um, memorialize and to give recognition to the native people of that area. And so we do that every year. Um, I go to the Lipan Apache gathering that's in uh, Brackettville, Texas. That's like near the border of Mexico in the United States. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we see the uh, the border patrol <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, coming. We see the border patrol going and coming back. Uh, and because this is at uh, a fort, uh, Fort Clark. And we also um, meet up with the descendants of the Buffalo Soldiers there um, because the Buffalo Soldiers fought against Apaches. They were, they were the ones who uh, the United States used to help fight Apaches. Um, they, we've, we've been to a few um, gatherings with the Buffalo Soldiers and we, uh, ap uh, apologies were, were, were done, you know, between both, between the Lepons and the Buffalo Soldiers um, because of, you know, us being pitted against each other. Um, and it didn't help. I mean, it only helped. <laughs> it only helped one person. <laughs> well, not one person, but you know, one entity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, so you know, lesson learned. <laughs> and so we did. We did do an apology. So now every, I mean, every year we we. You know, we meet up with the Buffalo, well, the descendants of the Buffalo soldiers there. And we have a good time. Um, we're also bringing back the, the crown dancers to, to the Lipans. Um, the young ladies are doing their uh, puberty ceremonies. Uh, that has been brought back to the Lipans as well. Uh, that's an aspect of our culture that is very important for the the young women, kind of like a uh, quinceanera with the with the Mexicans. Um, the young ladies go through their uh, coming of age ceremony of becoming a woman, um, and so along with that, we're bringing back the crown dancers uh, that the uh, the missionaries were were calling um, devil dancers, <laughs> and they're way opposite than that. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I mean, they they heal the, the 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 area. They they keep away the the neg the negativity. Uh, the it could be negative entities as well. Um, it's not, you know, not calling anything negative. It's um, keeping all of that out of the area, away from what's going on. Um, so that's being reintrodu reintroduced to us as well. We, we have young, young kids uh, being taught the, uh, the crown dance, the, well, the hashchin. Um, and you know, I I was informed of this when uh, when I went to the ceremony uh, last month, and I was surprised. I was like, "Yes, like, I can't believe it," uh, you know, because um, that's because it's one of the things that I've been thinking about. That you know, we need to bring back uh, our own crown dancers. Well, I like to say crown dancers, but our own hashchin. We need our own hashchin, and um, because all the other Inde people have their uh their hashtin and but we don't. So that's being brought back now to us. As well as the buffalo, the Iyane, um, and 
the Naiyas as the puberty ceremony. Um, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're coming back, we're resurging. It's gotta feel time. great to watch all of these <laughs> things come back in your lifetime, right? Yes, yes. I'm, like I say, I'm I'm surprised because I'm I'm like, well, I won't be here when this happens. I won't be here when that happens. And <laughs> here you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. They're shocking me like left and right. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, you know, when you're talking about they or they're shocking me left and right, I'm wondering if you yeah. talk a little bit about who do you see as your community? Oh. Uh, well, I see Lipans as my community, uh, Native Americans, uh, Lipan Apaches, uh, Lipan Apache Band of Texas, the Kansas Inde people of Louisiana, um, also Lipan Apache Tribe of Texas, we're Lipans. Um, the Lipans that continue to live on the Mescalero Reservation. Uh, but I see Apaches in general as my people. They are my people. And then to go specifically, the Lipan. Um, Lipande, and that's, that's how we say it. Um, so, like having uh, been part Creole, it, you know, it doesn't diminish my nativeness. It, I'm proud of it. I respect it. Um, I that'd be cool if I knew Creole a lot, like my dad did. <laughs> does, I mean, but I, I, I can understand it more or less. But like speaking it, not really. Um, I can speak more Apache than I do Creole. Um, and. Yeah, I mean, I flock to more native people and native things than anything else. Um, I advocate for native people because uh, we need to be seen. We need to be. We need to have more representation in uh, in the media, and not negative. We need to have positive representation. Also, in movies. Um, don't have a native person playing as someone else, as a as a Latino or something like that. That makes no sense. You have a Latino uh, actor playing uh, as a Latino, so have a native actor playing as a native. We can we live in contemporary society, um, and natives can natives are not can be natives are lawyers and doctors and everything else like everyone else um singers rappers <laughs> um artists is i mean we run the gamut you know it's just it's, we're not back in the past where they think we only wear buckskin and that's all we do and it's like we can we have our culture we're not losing it we have our culture, but we also, we, so we say we live in two worlds. We live in the colonized world and we live in our uh, cultural world, our native world. And we're resilient people because we can navigate both. And a lot of people can't. <laughs> let, let, let them try and do it and they'll be like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How do you find yourself staying connected with your community? I remember you mentioned earlier this story about, you know, you know, having a friend that you somehow, you know, you lost over time and mm -hmm. reconnected with or how do you how do you make sure that you you stay connected with people? Uh, well, I keep in contact, you know, now of my uh, the phone I had. <laughs> <laughs> I, used to have, I used to have a flip phone, a biscuit. <laughs> they call it a biscuit every time I take that thing out. Um, a biscuit? It's funny. Yeah, they call it a biscuit. <laughs> I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know why they called it a biscuit, but anyway. <laughs> uh, 
And uh, they said, man, what are you doing that biscuit? And I, I've had that for the longest, for years. And until I, I can have it anymore, I mean, it was falling apart. So I, I changed up to an iPhone 5. Mm -hmm. I had an iPhone 5 until that wasn't supported anymore because they text gave me a sent me a text saying that this this phone an iPhone 5 will no longer be supported and stuff like that. I'm like, man. Yeah. So now I have this one. <laughs> so it's my third phone. Um and so uh keeping up with you know people, I think it's easier now for me. And and growing up, I was like a a wanderer in a way, because I, I never stayed in one place. Like this is my, I, like I own this now. So this is like only, this is the first thing I've owned, like, like housewise. So, um, so having this phone, keeping up with them through this device and like Instagram and social media stuff like that. But I'm not on Facebook. So I have uh, my cousins, they, you know, they, they, they have my number and all that. So they inform me of, hey, this is going on, this is going on, you want to go? I oh, don't want to go, or, but they always inform me of stuff that's going on. So, uh, so that's how I keep up, like, with other powwows and stuff like that, because uh, everything is on Facebook, um, and I'm not. I, I, I just don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, but on my phone, I have, uh, contact numbers of, uh, many people that, that I've met and that, uh, I have their, their number and I've recently contacted, uh, uh the Cherokees because they, they wanted to come and, uh, visit us to have, a like, a Re, a reintroduction to having uh, tribal relations, like being, you know, friends. Um, uh, and it's the Cherokees that are in Texas, if I'm not mistaken, Texas Cherokees. Yeah, Texas Cherokees. And so, I mean, you know, just keep in touch through this phone, through, through this device. Like I'm doing now with Zoom. <laughs> Zoom it. <laughs> Zoom it. <laughs> I, I, and I feel like I'm, I'm kind of getting off my script a little bit, but I, I did want to ask a little bit about your leadership, uh, your leadership role. You just mentioned, you know, uh, you know, as a chief, you mm -hmm. know, other chiefs are contacting you for things. And I mm -hmm. just want to, could you talk a little, and you also mentioned earlier that you, uh, that as the chairman, you find yourself or you find part of that role is advocating. Um, could you talk a little bit about, you know, what leadership is to you and 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 what you try to strive for as a leader and, and what's being asked of you as a leader? Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can edit things out. <laughs> All right. Being a being not a it's uh, it's interesting. I mean, I, like I said, uh, I was reluctant uh, at first because I I didn't see myself like that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, how can I be not uh, when I'm, you know, all not all over the place, but I don't have a place that to like live. Like, I can live with my mom, my dad, whatever, but like, I have my own spot, my own place. Uh, I do now, but that that was back then when they elected me. Um, so as I grew in my uh, my position, um, I began to you know like see myself as okay, I can I, I can do this. You know, it's it's not it's a burden. Like I was told, it's, it's a burden because you have a lot of things you you have your people on your shoulders you know you 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 have to take care of your people they come first um so like being leader um 
you have to navigate like situations dealing with um, like government uh, corporations, uh, uh, and I mean other other people. Uh, you know, you, you, you have to navigate that. Like, what would be good for your people? Like, if they're not going to get screwed over, uh, it is for the, the people, it's for the Lipan Apaches, it's for the Kansi. We, uh, we were given the skull for a reason. Another group of uh, Lipans who were given the, uh, the hide. And someone else was given the tail. Yeah. So it's stuff like that, like uh, for ceremonial reasons or for corporations and stuff like that. You have to navigate a lot of things. You have to, on a one on one basis or with a whole group uh, yeah. in a meeting. Just like we're, we're doing. Um, at Vermilionville, we're doing a planning a powwow in Lafayette, Louisiana. Wow, no way. Right. <laughs> which, what are you guys doing which, that? Which will be the first powwow <laughs> in Lafayette. I'm like, Ever. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. you know, that's in the works. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's what we're doing. Um, and a tribal member is also um, doing like a, I think like a, an all native fun day, something like that, that, that he was talking about. And, uh, and he said, you know, like it, it's, it's not, the chiefs aren't, <laughs> the chiefs aren't like the, the conductors of this, of, of the native fun day. And I'm like, oh, good. I'm not even, I don't have to. Because <laughs> <laughs> because he wanted to conduct it. Like, he wanted to to do all that. I'm like, I am perfect. I'm good. <laughs> I mean, if I could just sit back and just chill, I'm good. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, it it was presented to me. It, it, you, know, you know, it was told to me about, you know, a lot of things are told to you, a lot of things are asked, uh, like, is this okay that, you know, that we do this and that, and, you know, you, you make that decision, because some, sometimes, like, for schools, we also do um, presentations at schools, and some things you don't want to, you know, share. Yeah. Apaches, Apaches just recently started sharing you know, like publicly with uh, the the culture a few years ago, because you, you couldn't even bring a, a camera to, to an Apache uh, ceremony yeah. or to um, a puberty ceremony. You couldn't even bring camera and take pictures or something like that. So it's very, you know, um, so they run it by you like okay we, we're going to be doing a, a, a school presentation we're going to teach these, these kids like some of the dancing is there any dancing that we you know that you don't want us to to show or uh our songs that we shouldn't be singing just you know and i'm like you know just social songs so social songs are for everyone you know ceremonial songs and stuff like that that's you know that's not to share with uh, the general public, but social songs is roll with it. I mean, and you know, and that's 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 what they do. They you know they they teach the kids, but social dancing stuff like that, not nothing dealing with um, ceremonial thing, and all that had to you know be run by me because you don't want. A lot of um, we don't want to. We're we are resurgent. We have been knowing a lot about culture. We're just starting to express it out in the open. 
yeah. uh, more. Uh, and so, and a lot of a lot of stuff was taken, you know. So that's that's another thing. Uh, we couldn't practice a lot of uh, our culture back then because it was outlawed. Uh, and so to to have it, you know, just willy nilly. Okay, we, we're gonna show you all of this. <laughs> then no, that's that's. If I'm in charge, that's not happening. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, what do you think? What do you think made the change um, where where things have opened up a little bit, or you're able to express this or or do some of these things when you you maybe weren't in the past? Um, I think we kind of well we push the change in a way because we started uh, doing this uh, like at Vermilionville. Um, I hung out with uh, Attack of Pogs, uh early on and, um, and they started, you know, they, they got, they have a, like an Attack of Paul walk now. Jeffrey, if you can, uh, yeah, we we helped them, and a lot of the photos came from our personal tribal archive that they have there, and we donated a lot of the information for that. Uh, one of our largest villages was directly across the Vermilion from Vermilionville, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so yeah, we did contribute to that. And I do remember you hanging out with us. For <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, quite a lot. That's well, how I, I met you. Yeah, yeah, because I was actually dating. Uh, yeah, this this young lady who's a tackle Paul. Oh yeah. Yep. Well, there you go. Yep. So, so, yeah. <laughs> so I have another question. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so you know, I hung out with the tackle Pauls uh, for for a good little while. I mean, um, and things happened with them and. Uh, and with us, like, we we're like, well, we need to, you know, show, you know, our, show, show ourselves, you know, like, come out, let them know that we are still here as well. Um, and so we, like, going to Vermilionville, uh, started doing that. Um, <laughs> one of the, the anthropologists, one of uh, I don't want to say people's names. <laughs> an anthropologist, but, yeah. Yeah, an, an anthropologist, um, you know, was also shocked that that there are Apaches here. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, there are Apaches, and then specifically lip on Apaches. <laughs> um, they were called Kansi, uh, and there's also a lake, I think, in the Soto Parish, if I'm not mistaken, in the Soto Parish that. Uh, Kanishnia Lake was named after the Kansi people that that were in Louisiana back then. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff that that isn't even told. Um, and you know, I had to like bring that up to him, like bring up evidence, like in a way, <laughs> for for this person to realize and. Then it piqued his interest and he began to dig and he's like, oh, there are, there are lupines here. And I'm like, dude. <laughs> I'm here. <Yeah. laughs> I'm like, really? Are you serious? <laughs> no way. <laughs> that happened. That, that really happened. I was like, oh, okay. Um, because <laughs> I also told myself, okay, you have the Choctaw Apache, for example. The Choctaw Apaches are Choctaw and Lepon Apache mix, <laughs> not Geronimo Apache, yeah. not, <laughs> and that's what people are thinking that those are Western Apaches. There are Eastern Apaches as well, Ikaria and Lepon. And, you know, I, I, I explained that to him, and, and when he started doing researches on the Lepon, who were called Kansi and all that. 
and you start to find out, you know, documentation about, ah, there are ponds in Louisiana. <laughs> and he was just like, oh man, y'all come on. I mean, y'all, can you, I mean, do y'all still drum? Y'all still have songs and all that? And that's how that start began to snowball. And like, yeah, we have songs and like, what? I'm like, yeah, we have songs. <laughs> And so, you know, we were invited to stuff like that and we started singing. It's not in English. <laughs> and I mean, he was just flabbergasted. He's like, oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Hiding in plain sight. Right, exactly. Okay. Yep. Um. One thing is that you mentioned a few few times is that the the Pan Apache are you know kind of cross border, um, and that you mm -hmm. know I'm thinking back of that that experience that you had at um, at Art Institute where people are saying there's there's no Native Americans and you, and you and your your friend are sitting there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like there's like this uh, that your band of people have like this uh, consistent you know this history of African uh, ancestry and also, you know, um, south of the border or Latino or Mexican ancestry. Mm -hmm. Something's very common are in Louisiana tribes in Louisiana. Um, mm -hmm. What is your relationship to that? Or could you talk a little bit about um, how, you, how you identify and how you position yourself within that? Well, I identify as Lipan. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's who I am, small change. Mm -hmm. um, and with Mexican and African American, I if I if I'm around African Americans, I'm Native American. I'm Lipan. Never changed. I'm around Mexicans, same thing. Um, and you know, uh, I've I've met like some African-Americans that they're like, oh, okay, man, you know what? I knew uh, some of my, I got some uh, native too, you know, stuff like that. Um, but they don't know which tribe they're from and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and it's interesting and it's, it's and kind of like also with Mexicans, Mexicans are native people. They, some of them, not even all of them. They're just, uh, let's say, they're assimilated culturally into the, let's see, Latino culture. And, but genetically, a lot of them are native. They, they just don't know their, their tribe anymore mm -hmm. because they've been uh, taken out of their native culture. But a lot of the things that they do is still native. I mean, tortillas and all that, that aguacates, that's native. It's not from Spain. Um, the, the corn, not from Spain, not from Europe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of stuff that, you know, people still have that shows them their culture. Um, and also, they, they, they're they also reawakening the the uh the mexicas the the mexicans they're reawakening um knowing that yeah they're they're native they're native people yeah um but african americans uh not all of them but there are some that that yeah they do have native uh ancestry and that has been lost because they were lump dumped as a uh, as black um, and some ask me, you know, well, how, well, how can I find out, you know, stuff like that? And I'm like, <sighs> I'm like, okay, you, you just start from the oldest person that you have. I mean, that you have alive. If your mom or dad, aunt, uncle that can remember the names and the birthplace of your ancestors and stuff like that. And then and go on uh, ancestry or those those websites that help you find you know your your um, your ancestry. Uh, we have all that. We 
um, we've been documented uh, in Louisiana by the the vigilante committee of the attack upon. And these these were vigilante uh, uh, planners who were rich. And the the Lipans who held who escaped and held out in this area in St. Martin Parish. Um, they called it Prairie Maron. Prairie Maron means runaway or unlicensed prairie. They they they've lived there for for years, 50 or more years. Um, and all this is documented. It's not told in Louisiana history. <laughs> um, and they were uh, labeled as unwanted because the, the, uh, the, the planners coveted the, the land that, that, um, that the, well, they called them the Coco tribe because, chief, because of the chief, Chief Coco, who had the land grant from the Spanish. So um, they coveted his, uh, the land and he took in the runaway natives. The the because you couldn't keep Apaches as slaves. They they tried, <laughs> but it, it wasn't easy because the, they they were still in the Americas. Lipans were in Texas and they moved to Louisiana back and forth. So, you know, it's wasn't unfamiliar territory. Um, and so they had Lipans here. Um, they hid out. Uh, they hung out with supposedly uh, documented, supposedly, of course, they try to demonize everybody. <laughs> so they, they, they hung out with uh, unscrupulous people uh, and they wanted the tribe out, out of the area. Um, so what they did was wait, they, they <clears throat> They've been waiting for, for years. So they waited until uh, Coco was too old to fight back. Mm -hmm. And then they raided the, then they raided the tribe. Mm -hmm. And they oust, he, he was like 70 something years old. Wow. Yep, His, uh, he had two wives. Um, they were both sisters mm -hmm. and uh, they're two, uh, one 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 passed away so he uh he had one wife who was 60 something years old wow. and they told him they had to go they had to go to texas mm -hmm. that's the place where they want him to go back to yeah <laughs> go back to texas y'all shouldn't have bring him to take from texas <laughs> but <laughs> they wanted him to go back to texas and um so him and six others like uh it was a cajun guy that that went with him because he was uh dating one of the daughters uh they went to marksville uh they knew somebody there uh he get they 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 held out in a shed in marksville and they and they hunted and they hunted the you know they hunted the land uh to feed themselves the vigilantes eventually caught up with them again and told them that they had to go they, they didn't want them to stay in louisiana at all they wanted they wanted them out to texas completely out of louisiana um but they 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 trekked out again they well they say that the last thing that was recorded about the little exile group was that they, they went towards New Orleans area. That, that was the last uh, documented trail about uh, Coco and, and the ones that, that left with him. And everybody else, uh, the good bears and everybody else, they, they, they said that we were scattered. Mm -hmm. so, that's how, so that's how they documented it. And that's how they were able to, uh, 
to take the land, saying that no, no, nobody was there occupying the land anymore. Paper genocide. Yep. Yeah. One thing that you uh, that like is a consistent indicator or something that I I really enjoy thinking about is is language. Um, you mentioned earlier that um, that you're much more familiar with indigenous languages than you are with Creole. Um, mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit about your language journey? How like what languages were you introduced to? How did you learn it, and what does it mean to you now? Okay, um, I was introduced to Creole and I was introduced to uh, Apache and I was introduced to Spanish <laughs> as well as English. Um, to the, the Creole part, uh, like I said, with my grandparents, or my, my maternal grandparents. Uh, and the Apache uh, language with my dad and his uh, grand, uh, well, I say grand uncles and <laughs> stuff like that, uh, and Spanish as well, because uh, they 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 went to Mexico uh, many times. My 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 dad on my dad's side, um, and I I mean it to, to me it didn't dawn on me that you know why they would go to Mexico. It was just like hey, let's go to Mexico. So. <laughs> <laughs> so um you know stuff like that i mean and i strengthened my spanish like uh, going going to school uh listening to uh, other well spanish speakers um i strengthened my apache as well uh studying it first and foremost i study it more now um, I have, I have Lipan, actually, that's a lot, people don't know this, but there's, there's Picaria and Mescalero, White, uh, White Mountain Apache, Western Apache dictionaries. Um, I have all those. Um, but also there's Lipan. Uh, it's not in a dictionary, but it's, uh, it's from the, uh, I'm trying to remember that that institute. Uh, uh, um, Summer Institute of Linguistics, maybe SIL. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's an institute. Oh, that big institute. That's I think. I forgot it. But you're talking about the one the missionaries have, where they document the languages. Uh, whatever yeah, yes, I, I know. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, SIL. Yeah, SIL. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So actually, uh, this they they've had an extensive amount of documentation on Lipan specifically Lipan, oh. and so I contacted them and they sent me everything that they had, Great. and now all of this is in cursive. <laughs> So, oh God, okay. Because when you're first looking at, it, I mean, I can I can read it now, but like when you're first looking at it, it's like, wow, this person did not print. <laughs> and then it's, I mean, this is like, okay, I don't know what he wrote, but it starts to click. It just start I just start to see the words, and I'm like, okay. So, and I start and I compare it. Like okay, well, well li the way Lipans say something and the way White Mountain say something, or West Apache, or Mescalero, or Hikaria, and they're similar. I mean, it's like okay, so this is this is real. It's not like you know they just say that this was Lipan and it wasn't Lipan, and it really is Lipan. So um, so now like I know more. Lipan, I, I did, I, I knew more Hikaria uh, way of talking than, than uh, Lipan, but now I, I know more lip, uh, Lipan because I can switch out the words. <laughs> if I'm yeah. gonna say something, I'm like, no, Lipan say it like this. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, so stuff like that. I mean, I love languages. Um, and it's interesting, like, to me, I can, I can absorb it. Like, it's, it's not difficult. Just, just, just like with Spanish. Um, I, I know Spanish. And with the Creole, if I had someone that spoke it more now, I could have more, more than likely like speak Creole as well. But my grandparents are gone mm -hmm. and you don't hear it. You don't hear people speaking in Creole. You'll probably hear them speak Cajun maybe uh, if you're in the right area, but I don't hear Creole, so it's not, you know. Do you have a lot of opportunities to practice uh, the Leopon Apache language with others around you? No, I would love to, but no. Um, people that speak more Lipan is on the Mescalero Reservation. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, it's, it's one of the languages that's becoming less used. And they speak more mescal. Even the Lipans, they're starting to speak more mescalero, yeah. because it, there there are more mescaleros there. Mm -hmm. So in order to communicate, like in Apache, they just speak mescalero. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got to be um, that takes a lot of a lot of hard headedness and 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 will. <laughs> to learn language by yourself, so kudos to you, man. <laughs> yep. It's big. It's big. Yep. Well, I actually, I, see, I don't have none of this with me, but um, I have it like on a a little recorder. Okay. Yeah, I have a little voice box thing that I that I like talk to myself. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and then I and then I play it back. Um, also, um, I have on my phone the Hikaria Apache uh, language app. So they have a, a language app now for Hikaria. And so I go, I go over that, uh, that, that app and I switch out the words uh, for the words that are different in, in Lipan. Because I mean, it runs the gamut. That app is awesome. And it tells you every, I mean, everything, it forms sentences and everything. And it's like, all right. Nice. nice. Yeah. yeah. Kudos, man. It's beautiful. It's a lot to take a language back. Well, actually, like the Choctaw Apache, they've asked me to, if I can, like, teach the, the language, uh, the Lipan language over there. Wow. Um, they uh but they they have to you know run it by the the council but i was asked about that but i guess uh the person i was talking to i told them well i don't mind it is that you know you guys have to come to an agreement that you know they, they are an amalgamation of yeah. choctaw and apache um are they gonna uh learn choctaw which dialect of Choctaw? Uh, are they gonna learn Lipan? Uh, in doing that, um, it is kind of far for me to go every day <laughs> uh, to North Louisiana. Yeah. From where I'm at, because I'm in South Louisiana. Yeah. So it's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of far to go. I mean, not. I, it's still in the same state, but yeah, it's. Uh, I'd have to stay there. They'd have to give me like a time frame, okay, mm -hmm. from Monday to Wednesday, for example, and then off until Monday and Wednesday again. Then that yeah. way, I could go there, have a little place to stay, and then you know come back to my home yeah. like that. But go there every day, driving. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Yeah. That's what Zoom is for. <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, sure yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pitch that to the. Uh, I, I'll, I'll call them today. Yeah, I'm gonna pitch that to them. Why not? Let's zoom it or something like this. Yeah, it's 
much easier. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we're kind of got two more sections of questions for me. And then, uh, so Ida and Jeffrey have also been listening. So I know that they've been okay. writing notes and they're gonna have some questions after. Um, but I had two more little things before, before we open it up for them. Um, part of this project is you know we're making this publicly available and we're asking you questions and and we're trying to start a conversation because we're trying to embody what other people may have questions about um and so when we're thinking about this like this kind of ask me anything i'm trying to think in the back of my mind of like what other people um may want to know um and the two things that I, i'm thinking about is you know a lot of times um people want to speak to other people about um, their indigenous heritage, but they also know that sometimes it's not appropriate. Um, so I guess I'm wondering if you can tell me, you know, like, are there times that, you know, what are the things that, you know, um, when people ask you, you feel uncomfortable or, or you don't want to talk about or, you know, you feel like it's it's a little too much for people to ask? like uh how much <laughs> how much blood you have that that that's that's native that i i hate that <laughs> i hate that question i do not like that question because that irritates me to no end could you describe i understand could you describe to the audience why that annoys you okay because it's like you are dissecting someone and trying to say that because if you don't have i don't know like in general society the united states has people thinking that you have to be full native like full blood native to be looked at as being native and that's not true and um you know e even those tribes that continue to do the, the blood quantum situation, you know, um, they, they, they have that one, that quarter and uh, one third and one fourth and all that stuff um, that's going on. Um, but that irritates me. It's, it's like, okay, so let me ask you, okay, how much white are you? <laughs> How much black are you? How much uh, Spanish are you? How much Asian are you? You know, I mean, are you all Japanese? Or are you half Japanese, half Chinese? Half Japanese, half Korean? Uh, you know, it's just stuff like that. That that's that's irritating. It's like, you know, they they make natives seem like we are uh, animals. Uh, you know, I have this, I have this animal that uh, I, I bred it with this to, to make it stronger or whatever. And if you don't, don't, don't breed it with this because it'll make it weaker. <laughs> and you no, know, it's just, it's, it's sickening. So asking how much native blood are you that I don't care how, you know, how much blood that person has. Um, because there are natives who are still full blood, but they, they're not of the same blood of, of like one tribe and they still can't be looked at as being of that tribe because they're not like a, a half blood of a certain tribe, mm -hmm. even though they're full blood. So they can't enroll themselves or they can't enroll their kids into their tribe. They can't be of that culture and it's, it, it, it makes no sense. It's just, you just throw your people away. Um, so, you know, asking that and all, all it is is a, a device from the government to eradicate native. You, you have them cut themselves up into halves and quarters and one eighths, one sixteenths and all that stuff and then Eventually, there won't be any people there. There won't be any people on that reservation. There won't be any people in that community to, to claim this area. So that way we can take it. Now, even though natives are persistent and resilient, still 
that's that's the the concept. That's the that's the way the government played it to cut them off. You know, you won't be able to receive benefits if you're not if you don't have a certain blood quantum um, and your people. Um, it's just it's, it's sickening. Um, so when someone asks me, you know, like how much native are you? You know, and I'm like, <laughs> I get a little uh, sniffy. <laughs> yeah. So you know, if if you had your way in life, and people were able to ask you a question that's not that, you know, what do you feel like? Are there anything that you just you feel like, gee, I really wish people would ask me more about this. This is something I really like to talk more about, but I I don't necessarily get asked often. Mm -hmm. Uh, not really. I mean, for me, I I get along with everybody, with anyone doesn't matter uh they have something to ask you can ask but uh that question that yeah that's that's irritating but um like something that i wish they would ask me mm, not really is there anything that you particularly want to talk about or you know want to share with people uh what I want to talk about is that we need to have more representation here in Louisiana. There are there are tribes here that are federally recognized and state recognized, and you don't know anything about these tribes. Uh, so apart from that, then you have those who are who have no recognition at all. So if the recognized ones <laughs> aren't being represented by the state or you know shown anything in public like uh so the unrecognized people are just phew, totally invisible um like i said we need more representation we need more uh we need to be looked at uh those who are unrecognized need to be um looked at by the government and uh given their recognition instead of not just well you need in our situation that we were told that we need uh a politician uh, a representative in that area in this area to uh rally for us to get our recognition mm -hmm. Now, before we sent all the documentation, first it was all documentation. Then it was, okay, we never received any of the documentation. So we sent it again. <laughs> and then uh, some Jindo was in office. I'm gonna say this name. <laughs> <laughs> Jindo was in office and he closed how, and, he, and he's Indian, but not from here. And he closed, the freaking uh native american office in the government uh in in louisiana uh in br there was no one there in, in that office so that went you know down the drain so we had no uh communication with this person until he was gone and now uh now there's edwards so we're trying you know trying again we don't you know, it's it's like the way they treat natives is, is like out of sight, out of mind, um, or like little step stepchildren, you know, the little red-headed stepchild. Like, oh, you're bothering me, go away, you know. Uh, they, they give you one, they give you one avenue to supposedly uh, walk down and you do that, and then they come up with another one. And it's like okay, so so we need we need uh, people in government that will talk to us, that will hear what we got to say, that will look at our situations and our our documentation. I mean, it's 
it's crazy. It's, it's crazy uh, the way they do things. Um, and also we need more cohesion with natives here in Louisiana. Uh, even though you're unrecognized, a lot of uh, recognized tribes, uh, they don't, you know, like, you're, you're not on their level. So it's like a hierarchy. <laughs> You're not on their level, so we don't. We're not going to talk to you until you get to our level. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's like okay, we all have to jump through hoops, mm -hmm. um, you know. And having other natives making you jump through a hoop, it's that's another sickening thing because it's like, really? So I got to prove myself to a colonizer, and I got to prove myself to a not other natives. <laughs> it's like wow okay <laughs> a lot of proof yeah yeah um we have two comments i think we're about to open it up i think jeffrey has a uh has a question for you i also i'm looking ida wrote down um she didn't have it they didn't have any questions but uh while she while they were listening they finished a basket so they've been weaving a basket while I was talking to you. So thanks for that. Um, yeah. And then also, you know, we didn't get to see any any of your art. Um, and you were talking mm -hmm. about there's things that you can use thing, but we'd love to, to showcase some of it in the piece. Um, so mm -hmm. I can get, uh, Ida may get with you about that later and seeing if you want to add anything in for that. Awesome. Um, yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, I'd love to see your, your minis too. That seems so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't painted them yet though. I, I, and they're they're small. They're they're minis. They're not called minis for nothing. But <laughs> that would be great. It would be super cool. But I think Jeff Jeff has some questions, and I think we're good. I have a, have a few more, and I'm gonna push this out. So, uh, Cooper, I you're involved in horse culture, aren't you? Are you in horse horses? Yeah. 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 We used to have horses. Can uh, you say something about that? Yeah. The 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 lipons uh we we well, nowadays but back then the lipons uh had horses we had the horses from the spanish uh and yeah we were a horse culture uh as well so, uh, southern plains uh we used the horses you know for transportation for pack animals as well to, to help move the uh, the housing around. Um, but yeah, we, we the the Lipans were also um, into ranching with the horse. We we had our own brand as well back then. It's a lot of a lot of things that history hasn't been told. Um, but now uh, in contemporary times, modern day yeah my family we we still we we rode horses i rode horses growing up uh with my grandfather uh we did trail rides um now we don't do trail rides anymore grandpa isn't there anymore um we continue to have the horses up to a point but now we don't like no one i think one of my older brothers, he might still have his horse. I'm going to ask him. But besides him, uh, I don't have mine anymore. And my other brothers, they don't have theirs anymore. Uh, we had no place to to house them. We were, we were uh, renting space for the horses um, at, a, at, a, at a barn. And if you don't have, you know, like money, uh, I mean, you have to pay the you have to pay the rent. So yeah. we had, we couldn't pay the rent, and we had to uh, sell the horses. Uh, but I think my one of my older brothers still has a horse. I think. Um, I also thank you for that. Um, horses are very expensive. <laughs> yes, expensive. they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I say that as someone whose grandparents had a cattle ranch and we had some horses on it. They are very um, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about Vermilionville. Uh, obviously, my own tribe has a relationship with Vermilionville. It's in our traditional territory. But uh, what has that meant to the tribe to have, you know, a prominent organization that 
is also welcoming to you, which might not be the case everywhere in Louisiana with regard to the belief on Apache. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that was a blessing. That's, is, I mean, I was, like I said, the, the guy was floored and I was floored that, you know, because of the, the, the way we were received. I mean, what I wanted to do was to, to show them that we were still here. And, you know, when I, when I did that, I wasn't expecting them to like, just be uh, like, oh, I would say a word, but <laughs> oh, oh, they're here, you know, and and, and it's true, you know. I mean, this uh, speaking with this person, you know, going, you know, telling him, you know, documents. Okay, we were here over here. Uh, this place was called this before it was anything else, and then yada yada yada, and and you know, with this anthropologist doing his leg work, so to speak, and coming up with documents. And still today, he's, he's still coming up and telling me, hey, I've met uh, descendants of the vigilantes and, you know, and I'm thinking about, you know, getting you guys together. You know, I just, I just want to know, you know, like if that's fine with you and your people, you know, like I don't want to have like any animosity, you know, like going on, you know. <laughs> So, um, it, you know, stuff like that, it's just like, wow, okay. I mean, uh, Vermillionville has helped us a lot and they've, they've also said that, you know, that we've helped them. Um, so, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's a handshake. It's a, uh, us uh, helping each other. I think you covered most of what I wanted to ask you about talking, so I'll, I'll refer it back to Haley. Thank you very much for answering those couple of questions for me, though. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. What, did, what gives you, you know, when you're thinking about, you know, something that you said earlier was like some things that are coming back, you would have never imagined in your lifetime they would, they would be back. Um, so like trying to think towards the future, I'm thinking what gives you hope for, or what are you excited about for the future of yourself and your community? Uh, I'm excited about, um, excited about that we, we're having the puberty ceremony for, the, for the, young, the young ladies again. I'm excited about the Hashchin uh, coming back. That is so awesome. You guys, <laughs> when when this is uh when when the youth are, are ready for this to 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 you know to dance the hashtin, I'm gonna invite you guys. I want you guys to come and document. I want you guys to to see this. Um I'd love to. Yeah. I've been I've invited one of my friends, uh he's Cajun and he was <laughs> he was just taken aback. Uh that's and he, and he said, can I video this? I'm like, yeah. He said, I never knew, I, I've never seen nothing like this. I'm like, yeah. Um, and it wasn't the Lipans, it was the uh, White Mountain Apache. They, they went to the Lipan gathering and brought the, they say gun there. Wow. And we say Hashtin, so see it's different. Um, so, they brought the gun and uh, and they danced the uh, gun dance there wow. at, at our gathering and it started coming like almost every year now wow. and now they're now they're uh, showing the youth our uh, Lepan youth the the gun dance and wow. uh, now, now the Lepans are gonna have the the Hashim back. <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah i'm excited about that I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that um i'm looking forward to going to a puberty ceremony because that's 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 something in itself as well um normally it's four days for the young lady four is a sacred number for us so um it's four days for the young lady and 
she she's taught to be uh, a woman from a from a young girl to a woman. Uh, so that's why it's called uh, changing woman. Um, and it's it's awesome. It's awesome for the tribe. It's awesome for the young lady as well, because uh, you know she's she's becoming she's becoming a woman, uh, the the pillar of uh, of the culture. I mean, for 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 Apache people, the women are 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 very strong. They're 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 looked at. They're respect. They are respected. You know, uh, you come from a woman, so you know um, a woman is 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 one of the heart is the heart of the Apache culture. And so, That's so have, exciting. Yeah. That's so exciting. And so have our look, have our young ladies, uh, you know, have that that ceremony to transition them from a, a young girl to, to a woman is, is, it's pivotal. It's, it's very good. It's no words can describe it. That's awesome. That's really great. Um, when we're thinking about this interview and like, um, uh, who do you think, who would you want to hear this or who would you want to listen to this interview? Oh, anybody. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Like the whole world, listen. I don't. I mean, I love for, for for natives and other lipons as well to to listen. Um, you know, there uh, there are still lip there are still lipons that are probably questioning, you know, themselves who probably have, I don't know, like um, they're 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 not like strong in their, uh, in, in who they are, because when, when they're off the reservation, like the Lipans had to blend in and hide with, with other uh, people. So you might have a cousin or even a brother or sister who might, ah, we don't, you know, you, we don't have to look at ourselves as being Indian. You know, because some of them might think being native is, you know, it's, it's like going backwards or something. And it's like, you're not going backwards. <laughs> you're, you know, you're, you're embracing who you are. You're embracing your culture, your heritage, your race, you know, as a people. And we have our own culture and the United States has its culture and we can do both. We do both. I mean, like I say, we, we walk the line. It's, it's, you know, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. Um, one thing that you, you mentioned now is that, you know, when you were, when you were younger, you were a bit of a rolling stone or there was this movement. Um, and now you mentioned that you, you have a, you have land and you're there, you know, at, how does that feel? I mean, what made that change or what made you comfortable with what kind of putting down roots and, and, and doing that where it used to be a rotating? Putting down roots, exactly. That's what I said. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not a roots person, but <laughs> um, like now, because he, like one of my brothers would, he, one of my brothers would tell you like, yeah, uh, with, with him, when he gets a wild hair, he he disappears. He he goes, <laughs> and I get my wild hair, and you know, and it's like I can't go because I have I have my people I have to uh, you know be with. I have to tend to. I have to uh, be you know be the nanta for my people. I can't like bounce around so it's, it's, it's like making me grow up in a way <laughs> or mature in a way <laughs> um and so that that's that's one of the things that i i 
resist it because I'm like, okay, now I can't go where I want to go and do what I want to do. And, and I can, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, but it's not like, you know, I can't stay there like I used to. Like if I want to go somewhere and I just want to stay there, <laughs> maybe for a few years and I can't do that because I have to come, I have to come back here. I have to, you know, uh, man my station and, you know, be there for my people. And so, uh, that, that, that kind of threw me for a loop, you know, when, when I was, <laughs> uh, elected that position and a position that I didn't even know I was, I put my name in the hat for, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just like every, well, okay. But then you know, it, it it was okay. Then we we need to elect Ananta, and it's like Arab, the consensus was Cougar. Cougar's gonna do it. I'm like, what? <laughs> I was. I mean, any of them. If you guys can speak to any of them, that was at the meeting at that meeting. And I was like. <laughs> it wasn't your first choice. <laughs> no. I wasn't my first choice. <laughs> I mean, I don't, know. I don't know. Like I said, a lot of them are older than I am. You, I mean, you wouldn't be able to 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 guess it. But yeah, there's a lot of wisdom in old age. So I mean, yeah. I think they made a good choice. So I hope so. <laughs> when you're uh you know so there's like there's the difference between like putting down roots and, and being able to move but one thing that you said that uh that struck me was um that you're thinking about putting a shed on your your property or, or something to to mm -hmm. start practicing um i don't know i was i was interested in that in this thought of like what are the things that you know kind of settling down will allow you to do more is that something that you're really thinking about yeah, uh, like I could sense, like like my dad told me, because he helped me get this. So uh, he said, you know, you, you don't have nothing in your name. And um, he said, so I'm going to help you get this. And that way, you know, you, you go where you want to go, whatever. And uh, you have this to, like, come back to. You know, so that way if they kick you out, like they kick you off the reservation, get out of here because you <laughs> they kick you off the reservation because you're disturbing the peace or whatever, <laughs> for example. <laughs> and you're like, oh man, now nah, you know, where can I go? You he say you can always come back here. This is yours, you know. You say if you want to put a TP, put a TP. That's that that's your plan. Put a TP, deck it out with microwave and everything and all that do what you want to do because nobody can tell you anything different um because i'm not living in a in a neighborhood where you have a, a homeowners association yeah yeah <laughs> uh, yeah them <laughs> so i'm not living in a neighborhood which is good because i don't want to live in a neighborhood and um you know and as he told me so i've been thinking um why not put me a you know, a, a, I'm saying shed or something like that, where, you know, I can practice, uh, I can do peyote songs and uh, sing and st stuff like that, you know, in my own way uh, on this property. And then you never know. I mean, you know, once I start telling people, like, for example, over here or in Texas that, you know, I do my own peyote ceremonies, never know. I might get some people that might want to. I mean, pray. I don't know. I mean, Why do you think there's not a, a Native American church um, accessible within the, you know, the Gulf region? Because uh, peyote doesn't grow here. It's uh, it grows like in Texas, going into Mexico, but also it it doesn't grow like in other places as well. And there are NACs 
like in South Dakota and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But um, I think because of the of church, of the Catholic church, and there are others too, uh, Baptists and, and whatnot, um, the different denominations that, that have uh, governed the religion of, of natives on the Eastern coast. And uh, Pale was looked is looked at as being um, bad, uh, evil, a drug, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And when uh, if it's being preached like that, you know, towards you know, like to look at that, like to look at a, a religion that's been here before colonized religion and then you know it's brainwashing in, in my eyes you know it's just like you know look 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 at the native religion as being unclean not not right and look at ours as being the correct way to to do something and to to be holy or to be good or something like that And, but yeah, you, you have NACs from Texas on to the West, to California mm-hmm. and up North. So it doesn't grow there, but yeah, there are NACs yeah. there. I had just wrote in the chat that, that they will come pray. Huh? Say again? I just wrote in the chat and said that they will come pray. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that would be good, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, with NAC, I would be interested in being a road man, which is which is like a like a, a priest uh, <laughs> in the church, but. Uh, it's 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 another responsibility <laughs> that <laughs> I wouldn't mind, but right now I I I don't have the the time. Yeah. Could you be a landman and a roadman? That's the question. <laughs> being stuck with roots and then also being a roadman. Yeah, roots, man. The roots. <laughs> roots are roots. Um. Well, that's that's all that I got. I mean, I've really enjoyed meeting you today. This has been a wonderful. I'm just really glad to to get to know you. Do you think that there's anything that we missed or anything else that you want to talk about that maybe we haven't yet? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I haven't. I'm just going with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever questions you got, I'll answer. I mean, <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, that'd be great. Oleo Cougar, as we say it in Ishikoi, Oleo. Uh, thank mm-hmm. you very much for being with us. Um,